beware the pain when it comes to feedback of resistance instinctively to something that's been felt back as a criticism because you already know this is an area where I am weak in, where I have a limiting belief about, about myself or something already. So when the guy gave the criticism about me selling USBs and said it was cringy um, and felt salesman -y and pushy, uh, I already knew I felt bad about that sometimes. Myself, I didn't like doing it. But it's how I make my living. So how else do I do it? It's important to mention the resources. There's thousands of people in the room um, and they don't know about my book because I didn't mention it because I'm embarrassed to. It's that. But I knew it wasn't the best way to do it. I hated taking the time off the clock for me to talk about my stuff. So all of that. So when it came in, um, I already know it's a weakness. It's something I'm not happy about. And so when you get feedback about something you already know you're not good at, uh, our, our reaction normally is to get really down on ourselves and really self-critical and then self-awareness doesn't even get a chance to become the outcome. Um, as I mentioned earlier with Esther, my daughter, whose daughter was sick, she was terrible at school and when I went to the parent teachers evenings they used to be brutal with how bad she was at school um, and especially history and the history teacher gave me a terrible time one night about how Esther was terrible and going to fail history. So when I went home and told Esther, she already knows she's failing in science and maths and so on. So when you get feedback that's critical about something you already know you're vulnerable in, like self-awareness, like how you come across to other people, like how you are um, insensitive or rude or offensive in the ways I've talked about, it's really hard to stay open, guys. I get it. But it's been aware that somewhere in there... <laughs> If you can get open enough and hungry enough, it's perhaps a prize that you wouldn't find if you're just trying to find the perfect feedback because there's no such thing. Seek feedback and help that connects with your wisdom, not theirs. When you're looking for help on this self-awareness journey, look for feedback and help that connects with your journey and your internal wisdom and your internal knowing rather than connects you to a, dependent on, a dependence on theirs. Because what works for them may not work for you. What works for me may not work for you. I think a lot, not enough of us that teach in any capacity in life um, are open about that. That's why I've always said an agricultural form of teaching where you put seed in the ground, let it become what it may and don't try and control outcomes because farmers know they can't is better than an industrial approach to learning where we try to control the outcome, have a batch manufacturing mentality, and I'm going to make this become like the last one. And that's the education system's problem again. We're trying to churn out people and we're trying to measure them by grades, which tells you nothing about their particular forms of intelligence that are not on the academic school radars. So... What works for me may not work for you. So make sure when you're getting feedback, one of my grandchildren was struggling at maths at school. She just couldn't get it. She's a learner. She's a keen student. But she just couldn't understand this particular um, part of maths that they were doing at that time in the curriculum. Her dad's an accountant. So her dad showed her how to do it. And she got it. She was so happy. She wasn't self-conscious anymore because she wasn't good at maths. Remember all that from earlier sessions, she didn't feel as embarrassed in school, she got it. She went to school, now she's nailing it. The teacher's so happy until, until they found out, they find out she's not doing it the way they told her to. So they said to her, you can't do it that way. You have to do it this way. That's what I mean, this one size fits all is not what you should be looking for. Look for feedback that connects you to your wisdom to your innate sense of, I, I'm going to do it this way. I know how to do that. I know how to fix that. I know how to do work in that area. Look for help. And that's why as a mentor, I never tell people, do this and do it this way. I say to people, here's a few ideas. Here's some options. This worked for me once. It may work for you. Try this book. Try this voice. I'm not telling people in a prescriptive way because when that's been done to me, I think, well, that worked for you. And we've got so many people around the world trying to do it 
their way and it's not working. So now they begin to question, is there any wisdom at all in this? So look for help that celebrates your wisdom rather than theirs. That locks you into your wisdom, not locks you into a codependent relationship with theirs. And you'll know, you'll know which it is because if people, if people are giving you feedback and it has words like ought and should and must, then you know these are feedbacks you should avoid. Do not subject yourself to the tyranny of the oughts or the musts or the shoulds. This is not good feedback, guys, in your self-awareness journey. Apparently, there's 152 different ways to hold a baby. Who knew? Somebody's counted it. There's 152 ways to hold a baby. All of them are correct. Don't let anybody tell you how you're holding the baby isn't right because it's not how they hold the baby. When it comes to feedback, don't let anybody tell you that your way of figuring it out isn't valid. Get the feedback. That's why I said earlier, reflect, and then respond in your way how this sits with you, how you want to approach this doesn't matter. That's agricultural permission. We just planted the seed. What you do with the seed, depending on the soil in your life, depending on your internal climate, how your mind works is up to you. My job is to sow the seed and give you guidance. I can fertilize the seed. I can water it. I can give it some climate control. But ultimately, you're on your own. I want to teach and give feedback. And I want feedback to me in a way that lets me figure it out in my own way, that celebrates my own wisdom rather than locks me in to their one-size-fits-all idea of the feedback that they gave me. Shoulds and oughts connect you to their opinion, not to your wisdom. I think the absence of what you don't want in life is not the same as the presence of what you do want. And what the oughts and the shoulds and the musts do is they chop off your life, all these prohibition areas, they become these no-go zones, leaving you left with what they think you should say yes to. So your yes has become the remainder of what's left after the prohibition has gone. After the oughts and shoulds have shut you down, you're left with a few options when there could have been lots more. We don't grow, guys. We don't grow from leftover yeses that people left us with. We grow from our own clear, exuberant, excited yeses. And I want you to find what they are for you in this self-awareness course because only through what lights you up, what excites you, even an idea, a throwaway line that I gave, a story I gave, somewhere a light came on in this course. You had a moment, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You pause the video and you wrote something down. That was worth all the time and attention you gave. People said to me all the time when I'm mentoring, whoa, it was worth all the time just for that thing you said a minute ago. Say it again. I understand that because I've been on the receiving end of that. It's priceless to have someone use a phrase, say something that absolutely turns your life around. Suddenly you're like, wow. I've never understood that. Now I can see it. I am that person. I see myself in that metaphor. I see myself in that analogy. I never knew what to call it. Now I have a language for it. That's the gift of great quality self-awareness person feedback into our lives because it leaves you with this exciting response rather than this that leaves you with, okay, well, I suppose I'll try that then. We don't want that. It'll kill you rob you of carrying on on the openness and vulnerability we need. All the energy and excitement that we can have about something as obscure as this, I suppose, because you don't think about this every day of your life, do you? Talk about this. All the excitement we can have about this, all the opportunities and enthusiasm we can have, because you should have, because this is so great when you get it in your life, only comes from this internal buzz and leaning in and want to. Self-awareness thrives on your yeses 
not on your reluctant um, yeses left after all the stuff we told you weren't options for you. Nothing will last in your life. Nothing, no change will last in your life unless it's your idea. If it's someone else's idea, as good as it is, it won't sustain itself without them there all the time giving you the energy that they gave you the idea with. If you borrow an idea and borrow the energy that comes with it, you're going to run out and go back and borrow it. This has to be your idea. All right. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you. And I want to say again, finally, you're never going to arrive, okay? I hope that's not bad news to you. You're never going to arrive in this self-awareness journey. So give yourself a break, okay? Have a lot of self-compassion. Take your time. Slow down. Develop empathy for yourself and for others. This is a lifelong journey. There's no pass mark. There's no examination. There's no qualification. You will never graduate from the school of self-awareness. And so knowing that, I commend to you this journey. I commend to you this course. I think, I know, I believe. It's a game changer. It's a life changer. And I hope it becomes that for you. Thank you. Thank you for being with me on this course on making self-awareness simple. I hope I did that for you guys. I want to make you aware of some other resources that I have that may be of interest to you as you're on this personal development journey. I mentioned in the course about mentoring, which is something I want to draw to your attention now. I am involved in both personal one-on-one -on -one mentoring and I have a mentorship group that I have of people from all over the world that I get the privilege of doing life with as a mentor. Uh, on a year, on a yearly basis. If you're interested in that, get in touch with us, you get more information, um, because mentoring has become a huge passion of my life as this age and stage of my life, as you can probably tell. Other resources are available online. You can find information by going to my social media platform on my website. Thank you again for the precious gifts of your time and attention. Thank you. Mm -hmm.